Hi, this is David from Team 6141, and in this video I'm going to be doing a slight overview of getting introduced to uh, Whiplib and VS Code and getting comfortable with it, and we're going to create the first project so that we can later code some stuff in the next video. So to get started, you're going to obviously want to open up Whiplib and then go to this little thing up here and click this. A bunch of commands are going to come up, and this is really important because you're going to be using this very often when you're coding. So what we're going to do is just don't worry about how there's so many of them. Just sort of follow my lead for now. And then as you go on, as you go along, you can sort of play around with different things and see what they do. For now, we're just going to create a new project. So now here we're going to create, you're going to see, you're going to have two options. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a template and that's going to make us obviously a template for a project. But if you go into the examples and you select Java, cause that's what we're going to do. There's a bunch of example programs here. So if you create any of these programs, it'll be like a pre program thing where it'll just show up uh, an example of something that was already been coded, all the motor controllers, all the different things have been coded. And so you can, you can refer to these as examples when you're trying to get your own things working. So for example, getting started, we'll just form a, we'll just code a basic, it'll, it'll, it'll form a project with a basic uh, drivetrain, things like this, same with the solenoid, uh, encoder, relay, all these different things. It'll just show like a basic understanding of uh, that concept. What we're going to do is we're going to create a template in Java. And for now, there's a bunch of different ones here, but for now we're just going to do timed skeleton. So we're going to select time skeleton. And now we have to select the folder. Uh, for now, I'm just going to use my desktop because then once we go here, we can name it project name. Uh, let's call it first project. So we're going to call it that, and then it's going to create a new folder. So I don't really need to make a new folder to put it into because it's, there's a bunch of files that are, cons that are inside this project, but when I create a new folder, it's going to automatically put everything inside there. So I'm going to put it on my desktop. And when I create this project, there should be one file on my desktop with all these things. So team number, this is really important. You need to put in your team number or else it will like it, the, the team number that you put into here will only work with a robot of that team because when you program the robo Rio, maybe I'll make another video about that later but when you program the robo Rio initially you give it the team number and so if you have a different team number the code won't work so put in here 6141 and don't worry about this for now and we'll generate a project so we'll just generate it in the current window and it's going to run a build so it's basically gonna compile all the code right here it's gonna run a build and while it's doing that I can show you that on desktop is now created a file called first project so we'll go back just give a little time to build here. Depends on how powerful your computer is, but we'll see. There you go. Build successful. So now we're going to go here and you're, there's going to be two files. You're going to go into your, your SRC. You're going to go into Java and then it's going to be FRC robot and you're going to go into robot. For main, don't worry about this. You're never going to touch this. Um, so just go into the robot file and you're going to see there's going to be all these different things. So before I get into this, the motor controllers, which are the things that control the motors, um, they use, when Brendan installed the, in the previous video, the uh, Phoenix lifeboat, right, at the end that he showed where you would, like, manage the CAN IDs of the different motor controllers, um, that also has a library which allows us to use those specific motor controllers, the Victor SPXs or the Victor SPs. So we're going to go here and we're going to manage vendor, li manage vendor libraries. So you can type manage vendor libraries if it doesn't show up for you. And we're going to do install new libraries offline because we already have that installed offline. And you're just going to select CTRE Phoenix and then we're going to click OK. It's recommended to build, sure. And so it's just going to run a build after you do that. And it should show up here if you go into your vendor depths. Now you're going to see uh, phoenix.json, which is just the library that we have just installed. So that'll work now. So now um, I'm going to go over what all these methods do. So these methods uh, correspond, they, they each run many, many times per second. Well, the periodic ones, the periodic ones run many times per second and the init ones run right before the periodic ones. So I'm just going to show here driver station. During a normal competition, um, there's generally usually always how it works is you have an autonomous period at the beginning and then that transitions uh, to a teleop period. So autonomous, you can't touch the controls. Usually sometimes there's an exception, but usually you can't touch the controls for X amount of time. Then it'll automatically transition into teleop, which is you go in with your uh, controllers and you start controlling the robot. 
And then after the teleop period ends, then the competition is over. So you're going to see here in driver station, there's going to be teleop, autonomous, practice, and test. So practice is going to simulate um, a competition. So it's going to automatically start with autonomous. After X amount of time, you can program it somewhere else in the driver station. After X amount of time, it'll go straight into teleop, and then it'll end. But what, usually when we test the robot, we'll test it just in autonomous mode or just in teleop mode or in test mode if you're at a competition and you don't want to mess around with the code in teleop and autonomous. So what will happen is when the robot initially gets turned on, it's going to run robot in it. And so this is going to run the code inside these brackets. If I write anything here, is only going to run one time. And then for every other period of time, sorry, once, once that runs, it's going to go to robot periodic. And everything else, everything in here is going to run over and over and over again. So it'll 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 run this code many times per second. And the same applies for everything else. So when autonomous init starts, it'll run the code in here one time when you start autonomous mode. So if I were to go to here and I were to go to autonomous, I'm not connected to the robot, but if I were to go to autonomous and I select enable and I enable the robot, this is going to run once. And then immediately after the code in here is done, it's going to go here and it's going to run the code in here many times per second. And then the same goes for teleop init teleop periodic, which is teleoperated here. And then there's disabled, which is once you disable the robot, which is clicking this button. And then there's test for the test one. And that's sort of a general overview of Whiplib. Uh, in the next video, Brennan is going to show you how to uh, move motors and how to create a drivetrain, as, or how to program a drivetrain, as well as uh, how to use a joystick to control these things. So yeah, thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.